This is my stamina AOE necromancy build for Blackwood. So let's get right into our stats. Running 2100 stamina recovery, 800 magic recovery, 500 health recovery, 6k weapon damage, 29% crit, 10.5k pen, 20k resistances, 2k crit resist, 28.5k stamina, 27.5k health, 15k magicka, 1600 is our roll dodge cost, along with 53% block mitigation, 171 sprint speed. Our recoveries with a pot. It's 2500 stamina recovery, 1100 magic recovery. Serpent. We're running the serpent for our Mundus Stone to give us that extra stamina recovery, very useful. And then for our food, we're running Throne. You can run Takeaway Broth here, it's just the gold version of this. I recommend running it if you can afford it, but Throne works just fine. For our race, we are running an orc for Swift Warrior, which increases our weapon and spell damage, along with reduces the cost of sprint by 12%, and increases our movement speed by 10%. Very nice passive. I'm flinching rage, gives us 1k max health, and heals us for 2200 health every time we deal damage for every 4 seconds, along with brawny, which gives us 1k max stamina. Other, other races I think would work well with this build is a Nord for tankiness and alt regen, and Imperial for that extra sustain with those extra max stats. For our sets, we are running 6 medium 1 heavy, all well fitted, try stats on the big pieces. We are running for our first set here, this is going to be Balorgs, and this is, since we are running a burst AoE build, Balorgs is the best in slot for that in my opinion, for a monster set. Um, other sets that you can run here though, if you don't want to run Balorgs, is Ending Guardian for more sustain, and Blood Spawn if you want to have a little more recovery along with tankiness. Uh, Balogs works fine in duels and never on a stamina, but you might run into some sustained issues open worlds. If so, just plop on one recovery glyph onto your jewelry, or just run Engine Guardian, that should do the trick just fine. For our next to here, we're running Dagons for our AoE, 500 AoE, along with 2 weapon damage and 1k max stamina. So this affects all our damage to all our abilities, since we're all running all AoE abilities, this is very good. And all our jewelry is infused with weapon damage. For our other set here, we're running Heartland Conqueror. This gives us one, one weapon of spell damage, one max magicka, and one max stamina. And increases our weapon trace by 100%. So I'll get more into that, why that's why I chose this set. Dagons, we're, so we're running two mauls with sharpen, one shock, one poison. You could one run one weapon damage here if you wanted to, or just run poisons and, uh, and not run glyphs. Poisons are more expensive. I don't like to run poison. I don't have the money for it. But if you do, you, always, you can run poison here instead. For a back spot, we are running Bait Strand Perfected with a weapon damage glyph and powered. So the reason we are running Heartland Conqueror is because this increases our sharpen by a nice amount. And it gives us 9% healing on the back bar. If you want to know, if you want to compare this to another set, to Spriggans here. So you lose 1k max stamina and you lose 200 pen. That's what Spring gives you more. Spring will give you 200 more pen and 1k more max stamina than Heartland, but you do lose out on the 9% healing on the back bar, which is actually a lot, and I think it's definitely worth the trade off. So, for our skills here, we are running Camouflage Hunter, Razor Cow Chops, Blast Bones, Rolling Blades, Quick Cloak, and Dawnbreaker Smiting. Uh, this is your flex spot for this build is Camouflage Hunter, stuff you can flex it out for. Is siphoning if you want that 3% damage all the time along with a nice little dot you can also run shuffle since we're not running any snare removal here there's nothing you could run instead I, I wouldn't really run anything else though oh you could also run necropotence for um, more alt regen and you could run hexproof for a purge if you want to run that instead if you're not running camouflage hunter I recommend running crit pots on any other ability you put here but if you do run, want to run Camouflage Hunter, then I recommend either Immovables or Armor Potions, which gives you max health. I mean, it gives you stamina and health back and gives you 5k uh, physical resistance. For uh, We're running Major Cow Chops here for Major Fracture. Very important. It's a must on every build, in my opinion. You need a Major Fracture. It gives you a lot more damage. Plus, it gives you a nice slow. Helps in kiting. Blast Bones, Bread and Butter of a Necro. William Blaze, our AoE Execute. Quick Cloaks for Major ex Expedition and Major Evasion, and Dawnbreaker Smiting for that nice AoE stun. For a back bar, we are running Spirit Guardian, Rally, Resolving Vigor, Mortal Coil, Beckoning Armor, and Temporal Guard for that matter of protection. 
So the reason why I run Beckoning Armor and not the other morph is because this allows you to CC anyone who is attacking you from a range and just alleviates a lot of pressure because then they have to break CC and then force them to spend that like 5,000 stamina on breaking. Um, if you don't want to run this, that's fine, but this just helps a lot, re alleviate a lot of pressure. And there's an important side note to know if you do want to run this. If you do want to CC someone, you want to make sure you're like melee range so this doesn't pull them. If you're melee range, this won't pull them. And then their CC minion will come off and then you can Dawn Breaker them and CC them that way. Our healing on our back bar is 27,000 on Mortal Coil, 24.5k on Vigor, and our Spirit Gunning is 3,800. So... Straight gunning is a nice 10% damage reduction on top of this, which is 5% damage reduction. So that's very nice. You have 15% damage reduction on your back bar. Um, and then if we go to media and passives here, when you roll dodge, you reduce AOE effects by 12%. On top of having major evasion here, which is 20%. So you have 32% total AOE reduction, plus 15% on your back bar. Plus your hots are healing you for an insane amount. So it's just so much healing. And you have so much damage reduction. You're very tanky. And you can roll a lot. Uh, important passives to note. For your core class abilities would be Curse here. This increases your healing done by 8% when you have a negative effect on you. So these heals here do go up by 8%. It's not shown here. Another passive that increases our healing is Healthy. Which increases our healing received by 2%. So this will go up by 12-10% roughly. Uh, another important passive to moat. This is Dismemberment. That's a nice, very important passive. So you always want to have Blast Plums up when we go for the combos because it gives you a nice extra pen here. And then, if I, I would get all your passives, by the way, and all your class abilities are all useful. In two hand, you only need Heavy Weapons and Balanced Blade, but you can get all of them if you want to. These are just the main two since this affects your rally. And this affects your sword, giving you extra weapon damage on your back bar, which increases your heals. For duel, get all your passives. For medium armor, I would get all your passive again improved sneak. You don't need this one unless you want to be a sneaky snake, <laughs> then you can use it. Uh, heavy armor, I get all your passives. The reason why we're running one piece he one piece heavy is for Juggernaut, which increases our max health by two percent along with Undaunted. So that allows us to do is pump more max stamina since we have more max health. I wouldn't. I would just run seven medium if I don't have an Undaunted. By the way, I wouldn't worry about it. It's not worth the trade off in the, at that point in my opinion. So for CP, we are running Biting Aura, Master at Arms, Dealer's Rebuff, and Resilience. That's how we get our 2k crit resist, by the way, by running all well-fitted. If you want to run another star here instead of Resilience, I recommend running Swift Renewal since all your healing comes from HOTS. So this will give you a lot more healing. Or if you want more damage, Backstabber, and Fighting Finesse, these are nice to have as well. Four important pass... Oh, let me go over this. So this increases our weapon. This increases all our da our damage on all our abilities, and this reduces all single target damage by ten percent. Four important passives to note: I would go from piercing here, coming down to tireless discipline, and get quick recovery, hardy, and mental ages. Then come up here, get precision, come down here and get blessed, and then fill out the other passives as they come. Those are the important ones. For the red tree, we're running juggernaut. Balance Vitality, Ironclad, and Rejuvenation for the recovery. Nice armor, nice bit of max health, and it gives us another 10% down for reduction. The important passive are Defiance, Tumbling, Mystic Tenacity, and Heroes Vigor. I'll get, these are the four most important passives in the stream. That's how I'll get these four first. If you do want to remove pots, I recommend switching in Hard instead of Ironclad, or you can switch out Ironclad for Survival Instinct, which gives us a little bit more sustain. I wouldn't worry about the other passives, they're not that important, but you can just fill them out as you see fit as they come. For the green tree, this is all personal preference, but I recommend getting Breakfall, Liquid Efficiency, Seeds Blessing, Gifted Rider, and War Mount. Those are the most important things in this tree for me. Liquid Efficiency just helps us to save a little bit of money. Seed Blessing and Gifted Rider gives us more mobility. And then War Mount. You can, if you don't like that, you can take whatever you want here. It's just more for personal preference. All right, so our damage, our base strain damage, by the way, is 10,500. If you wanna 
proc this. Our last one's 20k. This is 20k, and this is 10k. One proc. So this is 20, 20, and then this will be 10k with Minor Berserk, along with, and then these are just nice dots. Base strand on the back bar gets up to 12.5k when it's fully up, if you're wondering. And then important else to play this build is when you cow shop to kite people, get them into your AoE. Make sure they have fracture on them before you go for the burst since it is a lot of extra damage. And so you have four roll dodges with this build, so keep that in mind. I wouldn't use any more than four unless you really have to. Actually, it's a life and death, otherwise I would try to avoid it. And you always want to make sure you're kiting towards LOS. So when you do run out of roll dodges, you can either block or hide behind cover so they can't target you. And then as they're coming up on you, just slow down the drops. So let's say we use this guy for an example. I don't think he'll come. Let's see it. You come, you pull the blast bomb, you medium weave into a dawn breaker as the blast bomb is about to hit, and that is your burst. This build doesn't have a lot of sustained damage, so after they start healing up past 50% from your combo, just fall back, reapply your buffs, get everything back up, and then try and burst them down again by setting down the drops, just using major assistant to kite, and using blast bomb to keep up the constant pressure. Uh, so that is my PvP build for Blackwood. This is a more group-oriented build, but you can run it solo. I've been able to beat a lot of people in duels with this build just fine, but it will definitely have some. It will definitely struggle against 1v1s more than the Templar build that I made. So this is more focused to AOE a bunch of people down. It does have a lot of burst damage, so just keep that in mind when you're playing the build. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions regarding the build.